Y'all ought to know by now, if I start using the words quiet, remote, and spacious, I'm itching for a hitching. And that's exactly what we got going on here. Today, we're going to visit Twin Lakes Campground, which is an Army Corps of Engineers campground in Pendleton, South Carolina. So y'all follow me. I'll show you around. Before we go any further, I'd like to remind you guys, please don't forget to mash that subscribe button, give me a big old thumbs up, maybe even leave me a comment or two, I sure would appreciate it. I wanted to tell you guys about this great app too, RV Parking. What a wonderful app to go find campgrounds all over this great country of ours. And it's absolutely free. Check your Play Store. Now I'm going to tell you all about this park and its amenities, but I thought maybe you'd like to know a little bit about the Army Corps of Engineers. The history of the United States Army Corps of Engineers can be traced back to June 16, 1775, when the Continental Congress organized an army with a chief engineer and two assistants. Colonel Richard Gridley became General George Washington's first chief engineer. However, it was not until 1779 that Congress created a separate Corps of Engineers. Army engineers, including several French officers, were instrumental in some of the hard-fought battles of the Revolutionary War, including Bunker Hill, Saratoga, and the final victory at Yorktown. At the end of the Revolutionary War, the engineers mustered out of service. In 1794, Congress organized a corps of artillerists and engineers, but it was not until 1802 that it re-established a separate corps of engineers. The Corps' continued existence dates from this year, and at that time, Congress established a new military academy at West Point, New York. Until 1866, the superintendent of the academy was always an engineer officer. The first superintendent, Jonathan Williams, also became a chief engineer of the Corps. During the first half of the 19th century, West Point was the major and for a while the only engineering school in the country. More can be found out about this interesting history of the Army Corps of Engineers. There's a link in the description. Now on to the campground. Twin Lakes Campground is on the beautiful Lake Hartwell, which is a man-made lake bordering Georgia and South Carolina on the Savannah, Tougaloo, and Seneca Rivers. The dam and lake area boasts eight campgrounds and 11 day use facilities that are operated by the U.S. Corps of Engineers. The Hartwell project was originally authorized for hydropower, flood control, and navigation. Later, recreation, water quality, water supply, and fish and wildlife management were added. Surrounding vegetation allows for plenty of shade, and the 962 mile of shoreline provides numerous swimming beaches picnic areas and boat ramps. Y'all, I ain't even kidding when I say this campground is gorgeous. This campground features 102 public campsites, a picnic shelter, five restrooms with showers, and two dump stations. There's also five playgrounds, one designated swim area, and associated paved roads and paved areas throughout. Day use facilities presently include a new gatehouse entrance installed in 2007, one volunteer host campsite, 27 picnic sites, two standard picnic shelters with water and electric service, one two-lane boat ramp, one courtesy dock for fishing, two comfort stations, one playground, and two designated swim areas with beaches. The campground experiences very high occupancy rate throughout the year and is Hartwell's highest producer of camping revenue. Say that reminds me, if y'all are looking for a way to support this channel, keep this here trainer rolling full of farm fresh content twice a week, why don't you slide over to my Teespring shop, get yourself a coffee mug or maybe even a t-shirt. But if you don't want to do that, how about you go to buymeacoffee.com and for the price of a cup of coffee, you help keep this train a rolling. 
You can also visit boondockerswelcome.com. All of the links are in the description. Thanks a bunch. I won't tell you about some of the amenities, but before I get started on that, I just want to make a quick comment about accessibility. There are a lot of campers that need handicap accessibility, and i got to tell you, this park does it right. There's an accessible boat ramp, a boat dock, as well as accessible campsites and accessible parkings. Apart from that, there is boat trailer parking, flush toilets, grills, lake access and lantern posts, along with showers, swimming, water hookups, electricity hookups, and campfire rings. As with any park where lake life is a feature, boating and water sports are going to be at the top of the list of popular things to do. A boat ramp is provided for easy lake access, as I mentioned before. However, there are multiple trails snaking throughout the shoreline area for hiking and biking, which are also popular pastimes. Now my usual disclaimer is to look out for bears. However, I don't think that's going to be a big issue here, although you do need to keep an eye out for snakes, because there's going to be a handful of them. Also, there has been an increased population of skunks in the area. Y'all don't want to tangle with that, nor do you want your dog to tangle with it. So make sure you're putting up all your food and make sure you keep a nice, clean campsite. Naked Baby Alert. This is a Naked Baby Alert. <laughs> I bet that woke you up, didn't it? Well, the long and the short of it is, naked babies and campgrounds happen. Twin Lakes is located just five miles from Clemson, South Carolina and Clemson University, which offers additional tourism opportunities along with grocery stores and gas stations and restaurants and such. Lots of pre-Revolutionary War historical sites are nearby this campground. There are a couple standard sets of rules when it comes to pets in this park. First and foremost, make sure your pet is on a lead no longer than six foot, and please don't leave your pet in the camper or in your tent. And for the love of all things holy, please clean up after your pet. Now here's a couple other things you need to know. The entrance gate opens at 7 a.m. and locks at 10 p.m. No vehicle entry or exit between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. And you must check in before 10 p.m. Off-road vehicles including golf carts, four-wheelers, motorized or electric scooters, and other ride-on devices are not permitted. Check-in time is 3 p.m. while check-out time is 2 p.m. Alcoholic beverages are prohibited. <laughs> yeah, right. Maximum stay is 14 days within a 30-day period. Changing names on a reservation, changing campsites, or making multiple reservations in order to stay for over 14 days is prohibited and violators may have reservations canceled without notice. Also, because this is a government facility, if you're in possession of an access pass, a golden age pass, or military pass, you can get these campsites for half price. Well, that's going to about do it for this episode of Eating Good in the Woods Campground Reviews. Whether you're an experienced camper or just getting started at this, this would be a wonderful place to come. A campsite on Lake Hartwell that does lake life right. Well, listen, until next time, y'all going out there and being nice to one another. I love y'all. God bless. Bye-bye.